Hey guys, welcome to a new reading vlog. This week I'm going to be reading Disney retellings that are not the Twisted Tale or the Villain series. Don't get me wrong, I love those two series, but I've gotten requests from you guys in the past to recommend other series so that, or other books that are Disney retellings so that if you've read those and you want to read something else, then what else is on the market? So this is what we're going to be attempting this week. Let me bring you over to my Disney shelf to see what I already own and that we could read this week. So here is my Disney shelf. I don't know if I've ever given you guys like a good look at my shelves, but this is my Disney retelling shelves. This is where most of my Disney retellings are. I have some other, like for example, right here, but um, the main ones are here. So over here we have my Twisted Tale books. I read all of the ones that I own right now. Next up we have A Valsable Than Deadly by Bridget Kimmerer. This is book three in the A Curse of and Lonely Trilogy and this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. This would be a good choice because it would allow me to finish a series so we'll consider that. All of my um, villains books are right here and on top of that we have a uh, Part of Your Nightmare by Vera Strange. I'm kind of keeping this one for like the spookier season but it's a middle grade book. It's quite short so this could be a good choice for this week. I think this one is a Little Mermaid retelling. Next up I have Spend the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. This is a Mulan retelling. Right here we have a Kingdom of the Blazing Phoenix by Julie C. Dow. This is a sequel to Forest of the Thousand Lanterns which I really enjoyed and this one is a Snow White retelling. Here I have my like original tales. So this is The Little Mermaid, The Jungle Book, Pinocchio, and Beauty and the Beast. So those two I haven't read. Those I've read before. And also up here I have The Magnolia Sword by Sherry Thomas. That's also a Mulan retelling that I have not read. So we have some good options. I don't know exactly yet what I want to read. I'm thinking maybe this one because as I said before this would be a good choice for like several reasons including that it would finish a series for me. I've also read the first two books in that series quite quickly, like under 48 hours, so this could be a very quick and easy read for me to, you know, get under my belt. So I think we might start with this one. I also have quite a few ebooks that I could get to. I know that I have a couple of adult romances and even I think YA ones on my iPad that are Disney retellings that I could read. I also have an ARC, but I have to check out when that one comes out because I like to read ARCs closer to their release date, so I'll have to check on Galley when that one comes out, but that could also be a, an idea for this week. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I have have a good variety of titles. Like I have some middle grade, I have some adult and YA books, I also have some fantasy and more contemporary titles. So I'm excited for that because I'm a mood reader and I don't like to read the same thing over and over again. And so if I read too much fantasy, I just won't be as into them than if I that if I did like maybe a contemporary and then a fantasy, then a romance, and then went back to fantasy. So hopefully I'll be able to read quite a few titles on my list because I do have a lot of Disney retellings and I feel like I've been keeping them, but this week is going to be the perfect opportunity to sample a few of them and give you guys my thoughts on them. So yeah, I think I'm gonna start with this one and I'll keep you guys updated once I have made a little bit more progress within this one. <laughs> I'm now on page 136 of A Vow So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Kimmerer and what I'm realizing is that it was probably not the best choice for a Disney retelling vlog, not because it's not a Beauty and the Beast retelling, it absolutely is, the first one at the very least is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. However, the rest of the series does not really follow any like original Disney tale story structure, meaning that in the first book we have the Beauty and the Beast retelling uh, part of things and then the other two books in the series are like the aftermath like what happened after the curse was broken so it's maybe not the best choice nonetheless I am going to read it for this vlog because the first one is a really good Beauty and the Beast retelling and if you haven't read it yet I would highly recommend it and I can give you my impressions on the rest of the series to let you guys know if it's worth it or not so far I am enjoying it I thought it would be a little bit harder for me to get back into it because it's been a while since I've read the second book in the series but honestly I just fell right back into it it's a super easy read the chapters are short the 
narrative style is just very easy to read. The formatting also makes it like a quick read. I don't know if it's because the font is big and it's, the text is kind of spaced out, but I'm flying through this. I didn't spend that much time reading and I'm already 136 pages in. <laughs> Why was that so hard to say? I don't know. But yeah, I've read so much already and um, I feel like I haven't spent that much time reading. So it is a super quick and easy read. And if you're looking for something that you will be able to fly through, then this series is a great choice. Like I've read the first two books in under 48 hours. So like, honestly, would recommend for something that will get you out of a reading slump. I will be honest though, I feel like we haven't been getting a lot of plot with this one. We're getting a lot of character development, but not a lot of plot that will bring us to what we're expecting out of this book. I'm trying to be very vague so that I'm not spoiling the rest of the series if you haven't read the first book. So yeah, um, let's just say that we know something big is going to happen at the end, but I feel like so far everything that we've gotten in terms of the plot of this book doesn't necessarily bring us to that point. So it's a lot of like actions that bring character development, but nothing that really makes the plot moving forward move forward? Anyway, I just feel like we aren't necessarily getting a lot of action, but it's interesting nonetheless. Like, I do love the characters. I, I'll be honest though, I feel like I've been stuck in this moment where like we're, we have four different points of view and the ones that I'm really interested in are Ren and Harper and I feel like we haven't been getting a lot of them in the part that I am currently reading. Don't get me wrong, I do like Grey and Leah Mara or Leah Mara. Leah Mara, let's call her that. But they're not my favorite and like I really want to read more from Ren and Harper because I miss them. They were like the main characters of the first book and in the second book it focused more on uh, Grey and Leah Mara. And I did enjoy the second book, but I want more Ren and Harper. Like this is what I want to get out of this book and so far I'm not really getting that. So I am hoping that we'll move to a part that's more about them soon because I feel like I've been reading about Grey and Leah Mara for a while and I just don't really care that much about them. Oopsies. But anyway, I'm still really enjoying this and I am looking forward to seeing where things will go from here. Hopefully the ending won't be too disappointing. I know reactions for this one are a little bit split. Like people either seem to have like enjoyed it or thought this was disappointing. So hopefully I will be a little bit in the middle. Like I will be someone who enjoyed it um, and I won't be someone who is disappointed by this. But so far, so good. I do wish that we were moving a little bit more quickly in terms of the plot, but aside from that, like it is something that I'm enjoying and that I'm looking forward to continuing. So it's actually a couple of days later. It's now Wednesday. I don't know when was the last time I updated you. I think it was Monday. So it's been a few days, but I wanted to give you guys an update on A Vow So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Kammerer. By the way, before I do anything, just wanted to show you guys. This book is so pretty. Um, I don't know if the other two books were like that. I don't think so. But I noticed that and I was like, wow, this book is cute. I like it. Anyway, I am on page 370 and I'm 30 pages away from finishing the book. So I feel like I could give you guys a pretty good roundup of how I'm feeling. And if you're asking yourself, why are you filming this update when you only have 30 pages left to read? Reason is, it's really pretty outside. The light like the lighting is great right now so I just thought this would be the ideal timing for me to film this and also I just finished work I wanted to make sure to film this update like while wow, the lighting was still great and right now I think I'm gonna go on a mental health kind of walk basically I'm trying this thing where like I go to the gym after work I pretty much always do that but on days where I'm not going to the gym instead of just staying home and doing nothing I'm trying this thing where I go on a walk to do like active recovery and it's just great for my mental health too so I'm trying that today it's super beautiful outside it's kind of cold but I think it's going to be the perfect weather to go on a short walk like it doesn't have to be long I just want to breathe in some fresh air because I've been stuck inside at my desk all day so it's just going to be a great walk and I feel like it's just going to get darker so I just wanted to make sure to film this update while I still could and while the light would still be great. Anyway, all of that to say, you guys are not here for the life rambles, but for the bookish update. But yeah, I'm really close to the end, so I think I can say with confidence that this is going to be a four out of five stars, unless like the last 30 pages change everything. But we 
pretty much have reached a point in the book where like the highest culmination has happened like the big plot twists and reveals and like all of the big plot points have happened and like the last 30 pages are just going to be wrapping up the series and the plot and everything so i think it's going to be a four stars for me it might be my least favorite in the trilogy but like everything has been above a four stars for me i think book one and two were 4.5 and this one is a four but it's not bad like i actually really enjoyed it i do wish that it had been a little bit more epic i feel like everything unraveled pretty quickly in the end i was expecting like a big fight scene or something and like it did happen but not to the proportion that i was expecting it to get i don't know if i'm making sense basically i just thought i would get this big epic battle scene and i didn't really get that like i got something but not exactly what i wanted out of this so i'm a little bit disappointed in that regard but aside from that i'm really enjoying this book like i really enjoyed everything that i've read i love the characters i just really love the direction that the author has went in and yeah as a whole this was a really solid ending to a pretty good series if you guys haven't checked out the it's actually called the curse breakers trilogy which i did not know but if you haven't read this i would highly recommend it the entire series is great and the first book focuses more specifically on the beauty and the beast retelling but this one kind of dabbles a little bit into that like it plays scenes that happened in the first book like they refer to them so like if you want a little bit of an insight as to what this is about like you get that here too but yeah as a whole really solid series would highly recommend it if you guys haven't checked it out yet it kind of reminds me of akotar in a way just because the first book is so specifically a beauty and the beast retelling and then what happens afterwards like the rest of the series is just the aftermath like what happens after the curse gets broken so this one is a really solid read and i just really enjoyed it so yeah would highly recommend it i know i still have 30 pages left to read but still wanted to give you guys my final review even though like i still have a little bit left of this to read now like i said i'm gonna go on my walk and when i come back i'm gonna finish this book and i am then going to pick up my next read i don't really know yet what it's gonna be so when I get to that point we will pick this together and I will bring you guys along for my walk because I think it's gonna be a very beautiful day outside so I'll show you a little bit even though like the nature is not really in full bloom yet but you know we're just gonna have fun on our walk so let's do that finished reading A Vow So Bold and Deadly. Officially, I'm now done with this. I nearly lowered my rating to a 3 or like a 3.5 out of 5 stars, but I'm going to stick to my 4 because overall I still liked it. But I do feel like things didn't wrap up completely in the end. And I don't know if it was meant to be like that. Like, I don't know if the author meant that to happen this way because she wants to keep the door open for like more possibilities or if it's just like... I don't know. I, I just didn't like the way that things didn't completely wrap up. I feel like we have a couple of loose ends and I'm not the biggest fan of open endings, especially at the end of a series. I don't know. I just want things to wrap up properly and I feel like this wasn't the case here. But also there's this trope that happened that I never thought I would see in a YA book. I'm not going to spoil it, but it pissed me off. Like honestly, I was like, really? I hate this trope in adult romances and now it happened in this book and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, honestly, I never thought I would see this in a YA book. But anyway, I still enjoyed it and I still would recommend it. I just was a little bit disappointed. Also, completely random, but there was kind of this thing that happened that reminded me of Snow White. So I don't know if it was meant to be, but I liked the little nod. Anyway, overall, still enjoyed it, but I was a little bit like surprised by how my thoughts changed after like 30 pages. <laughs> 
Anyway, I have decided that my next read is going to be A Worthy Opponent by Katie Robert. This is book three in the Wicked Villain series. It's basically uh, adult romances that are retellings of Disney stories and they focus on the villains and they're all very smutty, very like BDSM, dark romances. So may not be for everyone but I am kind of in the mood to read a Peter Pan retelling and I also wanted something that would be short and to the point like something that I would fly through that would really suck me in and I know that Katie Robert romances do that so I am looking forward to that I have been re-watching season three of Once Upon a Time and so now I'm at the point where obviously they go to Neverland and like I just have been feeling the vibes and the like, I don't know, I just want to read a Peter Pan retelling right now because of what I'm watching. So we're going to do that. This is a romance story that focuses on Hook and Tinkerbell. So I am quite excited for that. And it's an ebook. So I'm going to dive into that. I feel like I could finish this in a day or two, like at most. And this is why I picked it up because I think it's less than 300 pages. So it should not be too long for me to read. And usually her romances are really fly through. So let's hope that I will enjoy this one because I've been on the fence with this series. Like I like her other works but this series has been hit or miss for me. Like I like some aspects of this but not everything about it and depending on the book and the tropes I don't always like it. Anyway we're gonna try that and I will let you guys know what I think about it once I've made a little bit more progress in it. Hi! So I'm about to head to the gym with my mom but I did want to give you guys a reading update on A Worthy Opponent because I did manage to read the first half of this book. I'm now 50% through and I'm really enjoying it oddly enough. I say that because I gave the first two books a three out of five stars and I didn't think I would continue on with the series. I would just wasn't really feeling drawn to it but surprisingly I'm enjoying this one. I really like the way that Kitty Robert has built up these characters. Like I really like Pink and Hook and I love the way that they interact. I just really love their character dynamics and the way that their relationship is growing and evolving and I just really love them as characters and I'm really invested in them which is kind of weird considering like what the story is about but I'm really enjoying this so far. Like I'm having a great time and I'm looking forward to picking up the second half of the book so hopefully um, this will continue to be something that I enjoy and it won't get too repetitive. I do want to say that sometimes there are parts that I feel are getting repetitive like we get it these characters are tortured or like they've had a difficult past but can we move on from that like I don't know I just feel like sometimes she likes to make sure that her point gets across and I feel like because of that she just keeps driving it to like and just keeps repeating it and repeating it and we're like okay we get it like let's move on but other than that like I'm having a really great time and yeah so far it's been a fun read and I cannot wait to see where the story will go from here. So it is Saturday and I think it's been like two days since I've last updated you. I took a little break from reading yesterday to binge season two of Bridgerton which was simply incredible. I loved it. I binged it all in one day so that tells you how much I liked it and I was working until 4 p.m. So yeah I spent my entire evening binge watching the show and today I finished reading A Worthy Opponent by Katie Robert. I'm giving this one a three maybe more like a 3.5 out of five stars. It's better than the other ones in the series in my opinion. I liked it more because I liked the characters more but but I feel like it kind of went downhill in the second half of the book. I just, I don't know, at some point I feel like we were using smut instead of like developing the characters. I had a couple of issues with the second half but I still enjoyed everything that happened as a whole. Like I, I liked the story and I liked what it did and I liked the characters but I'm the kind of person with Katie Roberts who likes a little bit less smut and I always feel like she goes a little bit overboard and sometimes to the point where it's too much and I get desensitized to everything that's happening. I'm just like not really feeling it. Like I'm reading the smut and I'm like, okay, can we go past that? Like I don't care. And usually I enjoy sex scenes in books to some extent if they're well done. But yeah, this time it just always does that with Katie Robert. I feel like at some point I just get saturated and I just don't really care anymore. So anyway, it was still good and I would still recommend it but it's not my favorite like smutty romance that I've read. And I also decided to start reading Kingdom of the Blazing Phoenix by Julie Dow. This is the sequel to Forest of a Thousand Lantern. This is a Snow White retelling. The first book is the evil queen like making of story and the second book focuses on Snow White. So I am excited to read it. I haven't read much. I've 
only read the first two chapters, so I'm now on page 12. But this is set in an East Asian fantasy world, if I remember correctly. And I remember really enjoying the writing and the story in the first book. So I am really looking forward to reading this one. I don't know why I was just like feeling like picking this one up. Like it called to me this morning. So I'm really excited to give this one a try. I don't know if I'm going to listen to the audiobook for this because I remember really liking the audiobook for the first book. I'll have to see if I'm into that or not. But I started re reading it like physically this morning and I was having a great time. So hopefully I will enjoy this one. And uh, right now I'm about to go run some errands with my mom. And after that, then it's going to be reading galore. So we're going to be trying to read as much as possible because it's Saturday and I can do whatever the hell I want. So let's go run some errands. <laughs> read the first 100 pages or so of Kingdom of the Blazing Phoenix by Julie C. Dow and so far I am enjoying this but I'll be honest things were kind of slow in the beginning. It took a while for the plot to pick up and for us to get to the point where I wanted us to go. I had a like an idea of where I wanted the plot to go in when I first picked this up and to be honest like it took a while it was really slow I think the first hundred pages or so are very much focused on the world building and reintroducing us to this world and I'm kind of grateful for that because I had forgotten quite a bit about the first book if not everything so it was a good thing that this one took its time to reintroduce me to everything but at the same time I did feel like it was a little slow and it could have moved a little bit faster but like other than that, it is very much fun so far. I do see the similarities between Snow White and this book. However, the resemblances are quite subtle. So like it's there, but you have to look for it. I think maybe moving forward, the like similarities between the two plot lines will be more obvious, but so far it's been very subtle and like it's there, you know that it's there, but it's not like in a very obvious way, if that makes sense at all. The writing's great. I'm really enjoying the world building as well. And I am very much looking forward to seeing where the plot will go from here. I think it's going to get a lot more interesting moving forward. So let's continue reading this. Hey, so I'm about to head to the gym with my mom, but I did want to give you guys my final update for Kingdom of the Blazing Phoenix. So I did finish reading this book and I enjoyed it, but I'll be honest, it wasn't exactly what I wanted to get out of the story. I feel like I was in for a, like an epic fantasy story. And while this should have been it, like the plot followed like the epic quest that I was kind of looking for, the writing kind of fell flat and so I just didn't feel like I was invested in this story at all. I had trouble connecting with the characters, the plot was fine but like I wasn't that entertained and as a whole like it was a fun story but I was expecting more out of it so I was a little bit let down by it. I am giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I kind of failed to see the similarities between this and Snow White. Like I see in the beginning and in the end there were moments that made me think like oh this is a Snow White retelling but aside from that like if I hadn't known that it was a Snow White retelling I probably wouldn't have known just by reading this because it wouldn't have been obvious to me that this was a Snow White retelling. Does that make sense? Anyway so this was a fun story but just not exactly what I was hoping to get out of this book. So I guess this concludes my Disney reading vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you have discovered some new Disney retellings, if you've read the ones that I've read, and if you have any other recommendations of Disney retellings that are not the Twisted Tale or the Villain series, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. I am always looking for new ones and I guess that's it and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!